Bodhisattva means a great being who has a Bodhisattva inside him or her. He or she not just wanted to go to uh, uh, achieve enlightenment, also he wants to help others to achieve enlightenment. By doing this, this group of practitioners, they have to follow six paramitas. Six paramitas. Paramita means perfection. They have to perfect six kind of practices. In the previous time, we have discussed the paramita of generosity. Be able to, to share, to give. Being a, be a generous person. You wanted to share your wealth. You wanted to share your knowledges, your wisdom, your understanding. You wanted to share your time, your energy, even your physical uh, body. Uh, sometimes donating you know, uh, blood to others also is a kind of uh, giving. Okay. All right. Uh, we have discussed uh, uh, the first paramita, which is uh, uh, the paramita of generosity. The second one is the generous, uh, uh, the paramita of good conducts, percept, uh, precepts, observing all kinds of uh, good conducts. Okay, doing what is right, not doing what is wrong. Okay, today we are going to talk about the paramita of patience, patience. Later, we're going to discuss the Pramita of Diligence, then Pramita of Meditation, Pramita of Wisdom. So there are six Pramitas. We need to practice and perfect those pra uh, practices. Then we're going to achieve the Buddhahood. Okay. That is the reason we are here, because we need to really understand what is the meaning of patience. So I hope today, let's spend about 40 minutes uh, or 50 minutes. Uh, 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 we wanted to uh, clearly understand how to practice uh, the paramita of patience, how to enhance our patience or endurance. Okay. In Chinese translation, when we translate the paramita of patience, um, sometimes we will say Zhenru, be able to endure some harsh environment, maybe difficult human relationships. Okay. Uh, sometimes we translate uh, this paramita into Anran. That means you wanted to maintain your inner peace all times. Uh, emotionally, you are very stable. You won't be easy to dis uh, disturbed by uh, changes. Okay. Why we have to have a patience? I think uh, we have to ask this question. Why ne we need patience? If you uh, check uh, your own experiences, probably many of us, you are going to discover that uh, Whenever you wanted to do something good, or you wanted to help others, you wanted to be a generous person, I wanted to observe precepts, follow all kinds of good conducts in my daily life. When you make the kind of decision, it's wonderful. But the reality is, whenever we make right decision, Whenever we wanted to do something good, it doesn't mean everything will be very smooth. Everything will be easy. If you don't want to help others, maybe it's, it's very simple. But when you wanted to dis, uh, make decision, I wanted to support others, help others. Actually, at the same time, we are going to see some difficulties obstacles. And uh, uh, sometimes people will regret, oh, if I knew, I don't want to do this. <laughs> but we have to uh, 
enhance on certain other some practices, even we are having difficulties. Okay. <clears throat> when I was in the uh, in the school in Taiwan, uh, I learned uh, this true story. In a, uh, in China, there was a monk. He lived in the uh, forest by himself. One day, when he passed one area, uh, he saw there was a little baby on the roadside. The baby was crying, and uh, this monk uh, stopped uh, walking and uh, tried to take a look. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, suddenly, he couldn't find anything around the area. It's a remote area. Somehow, there's a farm road. And uh, house is far away from this place. He waited there for some time, trying to see if anyone who's going to return and uh, take this baby home. He wait, wait, wait for a long, long time. Nobody came. And uh, sunset after sunset, the weather was getting dark. He had to uh, take this baby with him because it's cold during the night. <coughs> the next day, he carried this baby with him and also visit villages in the, the area. It's a farming village. He went to houses and uh, talking to people, to, to uh, uh, local uh, farmers. Is this baby yours? And uh, he discovered that uh, after he talked, talked to almost everyone in the village, nobody said that was their baby. So this baby was, uh, what uh, sh should I say, uh, orphanage? And uh, there's no parents around. And uh, then this monk said, uh, maybe some of you can take this baby. It's a girl. Okay. Maybe some of you, some families, can adopt this baby. You know, in those times, uh, having a son, having a boy, probably is very helpful when they grow up. They can help. But having a girl is a burden. So nobody really wanted to adopt this baby. This is a female baby. So after some time, this monk couldn't find anyone to adopt. Then he decided, let me take care of this baby for some time until someone who wanted to adopt uh, this baby. So <clears throat> he took the baby back to uh, his own place. He had some rice some vegetables, but no milk. And this baby need milk. And uh, so the next day, he went to the village again, begging some milk from villages. Could you let me have some milk? There's a baby with me. I need to feed this baby. So some people praise this monk. Praise, oh, you are wonderful. And uh, you are trying to do your best to take care of this baby. But some people, they think different way. They think neg negatively. They try to guess. Probably this is your own baby. You are hiding your wife somewhere. Okay? Because you are a monk. Otherwise, how come you have this kind of kindness to the, this baby? You can you know, just leave the baby on the road, or maybe somewhere. And uh, somehow, you are taking care of this baby just like your own baby. You must be the father. Can you imagine? In people's minds, sometimes they are going to think positively, also negatively. Even this monk is trying to do his best to take care of this baby without any condition. According to uh, the material, actually this monk took care of the baby for 16 years until 
she was able to you know, take care of herself and a family adopt this young girl. He spent 16 years and uh, every time when this monk uh, went out to, uh, to meet people, people will praise him, also criticize him, say something negatively about him. But he was very, very you know, uh, calm. He did not have any anger inside him. He just feel, I wanted to maintain my goal, taking care of this baby. And that's it. Uh, so we call this patience, endurance. Okay. And also in Buddhism, patience, endurance, it doesn't not just mean that you are able to deal with difficulties, harsh environment. Also, patience and endurance means you are going to maintain your principles, your right understanding, something you need to do in your daily life without change. That is another part of a patience or endurance. Sometimes it's difficult for me to translate everything from Chinese to uh, English. In Chinese, even today, when we say zhen, zhen nai de zhen, when we say this word, a lot of Chinese people probably simply say, we have to endure some difficulties. We have to be patient in certain situation. But also, uh, it's difficult to understand another part of endurance or patience. Later, I'm going to uh, uh, dis uh, discuss uh, with you. So endurance is also another ability. Be able, be able to maintain your right understanding, your principles, and what you ought to do, even it's difficult for you to practice, but you never change. You insist on this practice. That is uh, another way of endurance. So uh, next part, I wanted to uh, discuss yeah, the meaning of endurance. Okay, actually, I mentioned some of uh, uh, the, uh, the contents already. The first part of endurance is be able to deal with difficult or harsh environment. When the weather is cold, you are still trying to do what you, you, need, you need to do. When the weather is hot, you still be able to maintain your practices. Okay. When you are hungry, you are still maintaining your principles without raising any anger, without changing your course. course. Okay. Every time when people ask me, Venerable Hang Yi, when you were in Taiwan for so many years, what uh, were the most you know, memorable uh, experiences in your mind? What are good? And also what are, th are the negative parts? difficult parts. I always mention this to you know, friends. I said the di difficult part, one uh, experience was we were always in hunger. We were always in hunger. We felt always hungry all the time. I went to Taiwan when I was about 14 years old. In some place, we had only two meals a day, one in the morning, one at noon. No evening meals. You felt hungry during the evening. When we meditate inside the Buddha hall, after a few minutes, your mind will, went to, will, will be going to the kitchen. <laughs> you know? You remember, remember the, uh, you know, the kitchen clearly. Oh, there are some food. If I you know, can have some of the food, that would be wonderful. Always uh, in a uh, uh, hunger uh, feeling. Yeah. Some temples, especially uh, in a school, even we have three meals a day. 
but one soup, two uh, dishes for 10 uh, male, or male students. It was not enough. You even you know, finished your first bowl of rice. The dishes are empty. So somehow in those years, we were in hunger and always feel hungry all the time. But somehow, many of us maintain in the school. We never quit. Even with hungry uh, stomach, sometimes we have to go out and to do a lot of uh, work, carry the you know, woods, move in dirt, pull concrete, help, helping construction work. But somehow, we still maintain you know, the course. In the school, some quit, a few quit uh, you know, the study. Okay. Sometimes, uh, facing harsh environment, we need endurance, we need patience. In order to pass in through those uh, difficulties, if we can't, then we are going to stop, we are going to quit. Yeah. So this is one part. Another part of, of endurance is facing um, uh, obstacles in human relationships that is more difficult. It's more difficult. Yeah. If I feel hungry, then I'm still dealing with myself, my stomach. But when you're dealing with others, it's more complicated. It's difficult to find solution for that. We need more endurance. Yeah. Do you know, recently I tried to find a time, try to find chances to go to the kitchen. Visiting the kitchen volunteers as often as I could. Because right after we have this program from 1991, I was occupied fully on Sundays. I did not have enough time to visit this group in the kitchen. So after a few years, they spread this kind of a saying, Variable Hang Yi, uh, don't, take much, uh, don't pay much attention to us anymore. <laughs> because we uh, rarely see him around the kitchen. But actually, I was so busy. In the morning, I have to be here from 9 to 11. And also from 11 to 12, I will be presenting another Dharma talk in the front. Every Sunday morning. Before that, I had to use all, the, all uh, times to prepare myself. After that, I even couldn't really walk to my room. Even I wanted to use restroom because people block me, try to talk to me. Some being arranged with appointments. Some just come to me. Remember, Han Yi, I wanted to talk, talk to you. Always until about 1.30, I will be here again, conducting another chanting uh, 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 service uh, until 3. So every Sunday, I was busy and busy. I couldn't really go, go to the kitchen, say hi, and uh, uh, show my uh, gratitude to all those volunteers. Sometimes, you know, they don't understand about the facts. So after I heard those kind of a saying, I wanted to maintain my inner peace. I don't want to uh, uh, be feeling that, oh, that, that's uh, not right. So sometimes, even a monk, in everyday life, we still have to face some difficulties, some phenomenon. We cannot find solution right away because you are limited with your energy, your time. Okay. And finally, the third meaning of endurance or patience means be able to maintain your understanding inside you. What we have learned from the Dharma, you are going to maintain those understanding all times for the rest of your life. That is uh, 
one important patience of the practice. Okay. The next uh, subject I wanted to discuss uh, with you is how can we cultivate our patience and endurance? First, let me ask, uh, ask you this question. In English, what is the meaning of endurance and uh, patience? What is uh, the differences between patience and endurance? Any? Yes. I think when you're enduring something, it's more difficult. Like it, that, that means that you're, <coughs> you're enduring something painful. Patience could be that you want, you want a new car, you want something good. It just means I have to calm down my emotions, but it's not so painful. OK, OK. I appreciate that. Because uh, this morning I tried to check on dictionaries, and um, um, what I uh, found this morning still probably the similar in Chinese translation. Okay, but uh, uh, the way you describe probably yeah we wanted to remember this yeah patience is more easier uh, uh, yeah dealing with uh, certain uh, changes, but endurance is more difficult with uh, yeah some situation. Okay. How can we cultivate our endurance or patience? Have you ever uh, tried to contemplate on this part? Actually, we have to find a way. We have to, to know how to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, even we wanted to be patient, even we wanted to have endurance, but, uh, but we never make any progress in daily life. So this part is, let's think, let's discuss how to increase or cultivate our endurance or patience. The first condition is, you wanted to change your mindset. You wanted to change your mindset. Sometimes we do discover that some people were in um, uh, very unstable situation, very angry, angry uh, moment, uh, moment. If you say, please don't be angry, and uh, please uh, be patient, he or she will say, this is my right, I have the right to be, anger, uh, to be angry. So sometimes when we f uh, feel we are not comfortable, we wanted to maintain this uncomfortable feeling by using certain kind of uh, attitude to, to express. Yelling and ma uh, Scalding. Scalding and uh, also maybe hitting. We feel this is my way of express. This is my right. I have the right to, to express my anger. Is it right or wrong? Is it right or wrong? Let us think about this. Is it right or wrong? Yeah. If you feel your anger can solve any problem, perhaps it's good. You always be angry. Uh, be angry. You are going to find a solution. But somehow, anger creates more problems at the same time. Okay. Later, I'm going to mention this. You are going to hurt yourself first. So let's adjust our mindsets. Let's change our attitude, the way we think. If we don't think anger is negative emotional feelings, we have to eradicate, then it's difficult to make progress. Uh, now today, uh, I can say that uh, in my mind, I never agree that I have the right to be angry. At least I can say that, oh, in my mind right now, I feel even I still have a certain degree of anger. I'm not satisfied with this. I'm not satisfied with that. Certain kind of uh, emotional uh, uh, feelings inside me, but I never say I have the right to be angry. Okay. But I wanted to manage my angry, my anger. Definitely, we have to deal with these effects. 
But my understanding never agreed that I have the right to be angry. So I wanted to maintain my anger all the time. Okay. So think, how are you going to develop your mindset? Okay. That is very important. Unless you feel, I wanted to eradicate my anger, then we have the foundation for the practice. Otherwise, there's no way. Because inside our minds, we feel this right. Even if it's negative, we feel it's right. The second way, the second practice is be able to remain your mindfulness all times in daily life. When you talk, when you see people, when you do any, anything, when you wanted to fix the door, when you wanted to open the window, be careful. Even small things, small gesture, small doing, but if you cannot fix it, if you cannot open it, sometimes we are going to accumulate anger inside us, even without dealing with any, any person. So that's why Venerable Tina Han, uh, he asks his disciples, the phone is ringing, don't rush to the phone. Be mindful. Count. One, two, three. Let the phone ring at least three times before you pick up. Because during that short time, you wanted to maintain your self-awareness about yourself. I wanted to receive this phone call. I wanted to enjoy this conversation with another, per another party. I wanted to be mindful, be calm. So by using this moment, you are going to increase certain ability in order to cultivate endurance or patience. Even when you talk to another person, perhaps it's not easy to communicate, but still inside uh, your mind, your heart, you know how are you going to adjust yourself. And uh, it's very useful. So whenever we receive text messages, today we are rushing into you know, uh, a lot of our, uh, reaction, which is not very good, because we don't give us a little time to wait, to be mindful. So in everyday life, I hope that uh, we are going to find a time for yourself be able to take care of yourself. How are we going to take care of yourself? You have to be mindful all times when you talk, when you do things, when you go out, even driving the car. Okay? So that is uh, the second way. <clears throat> the third way is we have to find a time to meditate, even for 10 minutes. It doesn't matter in what kind of a form. You can be standing in somewhere just for a few minutes, or sitting in the chair comfortable, comfortably for a few minutes, or cross your legs for a few minutes. Be able to draw your attention to yourself, and also continue to develop your inner peace, inner stability. Without having a steady mind, we cannot have a patience. Without having a steady mind, we cannot maintain our the clear understand, understanding. We cannot have a patience. Even we are happy, happiness is going to lose easily because the mind is not stable. That's why meditation is so important in Buddhism and also in, uh, for human beings. This is the way that we can create our self-understanding, also be able to uh, be our own, bo uh, our own manager or our own, uh, what do you call it? Master. 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 Be able to, yeah, to be your master. Okay. Without meditation, it's difficult. And also through meditation, 
we are going to accumulate joyfulness, joy, uh, a, a kind of uh, a joy inside you. That is important. When you have a pleasant feeling inside you, when you have a steady mental stage in you, you have more energy, more skill to handle difficulties. That, that is related. Okay. If we don't have that kind of a joy inside us, uh, we have a very unstable mental stage. If you say, I wanted to have patience, it's difficult. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. And also, according to uh, Upasaka uh, Precept uh, Sutra, there's another sutra. I introduce uh, this sutra, uh, sutra to you uh, uh, in the previous time. In the sutra, it also teaches us how are we going to develop patience and endurance by contemplating on this kind of thoughts. <clears throat> Eradicate your self-centered personality. Eradicate our self-centered personality. Okay. Be humble. If a person is more humble, there will be more patience. Yeah. And uh, with a lot of arrogance, sometimes people is not uh, going to have enough patience. You all have to listen to me. I don't have to listen to you all. <laughs> With this kind of uh, mind, it's difficult for me to have a patience. You listen, you are going to be uh, you know, a good friend to me also. I wanted to be a good friend uh, with you. In this kind of a mindset, yeah. then we will think, how can I respect you? Because I wanted to respect you, so I have to be patient. Okay. When we have guests come into your house, most of the time we do use our patience to, you know, to uh, receive guests. But when we see our family members, because we get used to see you know, all those members all the time, then we never pay attention to, pay attention to ourselves. Oh, I need to use my patience to deal with family members too. So sometimes uh, uh, you, you can observe those kind of uh, experiences. Okay. Everything is changing. Nothing is fixed. By contemplating on impermanence, impermanence, then we are going to develop a way to increase our patience. And uh, also, having anger inside us, we're going to hurt ourselves directly. Yeah. Because of our anger, uh, even another party never know that, uh, how angry you are. We're uh, having ang uh, anger inside us. Um, you know, from morning to evening, from the evening to the morning, another party doesn't know but you are going to hurt yourself directly. Okay. And uh, uh, do not continue to think on problems. Continually for more than, I would say, 20 minutes. I'm going to say this kind of a time limit. I discover a lot of people, they have a small problem. Because of this small problem, they cannot stop their mind thinking on this problem day and night. Then this small problem will increase, become a big problem. When our mind cannot stop, that is a real trouble. So even we are facing difficulties, problems, you wanted to find a solution, think for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. If you cannot find a solution, stop over there. Even stop for a few minutes that will be very good. Be able to stop. You are not using your energy just thinking on this problem. Day and night, you are going to ex exhaust it. So even you are healthy, but by doing this, it's not going to be healthy anymore. Yeah. 
And finally, according to the sutra, it does you know, explain how can we recognize, how can we see a person who has patience? Can you make a guess? If we wanted to see uh, who has patience, or am I having patience? Can you recognize you know, the, uh, their attitude? Can you recognize? Sometimes we, we can recognize. According to the sutra, it says, when a person who has patience, basically he or she is going to speak softly, kindly, softly, kindly to others. And uh, let's re remember this. When I talk faster than the fast, I have to be careful. <laughs> when I talk louder and louder, let's be careful. Okay? Uh, that means we may not have enough patience anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to speak you know, with a, a certain kind of a speed uh, uh, and uh, be able to express our kindness and also uh, let people fe feel that comfortable to hear our words. And uh, that is a certain kind of attitude uh, we can discover. Yeah. The second way to recognize who has patience is this person is very pleasant with he or uh, uh, her or uh, his face. That means if a person who can smile all the time, when we see people, we can you know, show our pleasant fa facial expression. That means we have patience. If today, when I see you, <laughs> we think, well, you know, showing this kind of a facial expression, be careful. <laughs> Probably something, you know, it's not stable inside me. Okay. So sometimes we can recognize uh, some individuals by seeing their faces. And also, some people, they can say hi to others first. Sometimes we are waiting for others to say hi to us. Yeah. But uh, uh, in certain uh, uh, gathering, people are able to say hi to others first and comfort others first. Those people are having patience. Okay. And finally, if uh, if this individual welcomed by others all times, I wanted to welcome you to my home, to the temple. I wanted to see you soon. Really, I wanted to meet you. Any individual always welcomed by others. Others are enjoying to be with this person. This person must have a certain degree of patience or endurance. People like him. In Chinese, we say, uh, according to the sutra, Zen Jian Huan Xi. Judy, how are you going to uh, translate? Zen Jian Huan Xi. You have such a present uh, uh, appearance. Everybody likes you when they see, when they see you. Uh, people are enjoying to see you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is my uh, talk for today. Right now it's 11 already. I would like to open the floor for you to share any thoughts that you wanted to share with others that will be very uh, welcome. Um, I think in uh, uh, this uh, uh, very high-tech society, uh, we are using computers and uh, smartphones and uh, uh, even we, uh, we are trying to do many, many things in one day, but it, it feels that uh, we, it's still not enough. We're still in a rush. Okay. Uh, long time ago, when people come to the States, they came by ships. It took about 30 days. Is that right? So uh, they have to spend about a month uh, in the ocean. Today we fly 
with an uh, airplane. Maybe after 14, uh, 15 hours, uh, you are going to arrive Taiwan from uh, uh, California. We save a lot of time, but we are still in, in a rush. <laughs> and uh, so it's a very interesting phenomenon. Sometimes we have to find a way, how can we enjoy our daily life? How can we increase our patience, endurance, not losing patience and endurance in daily life? Any thoughts? Mm. Yes, please. Yes. Um, I don't have any thoughts of my own, but I do have a question for you. Oh, okay. I was curious, uh, you were mentioning about when you were uh, in the training as a monk, the fact that they actually provide very little food and you always go hungry. I wonder what is the real purpose for that? And is it a really a necessary suffering in order to I, in my understanding, actually that was not a part of a training. <laughs> Just because economically they were poor. Yeah. Um, so, uh, one summer break, um, some of our classmates, uh, we had a meeting. <coughs> Many classmates told me that Rainbow uh, Hangi. Uh, uh, you originate from uh, Myanmar. You are now uh, uh, part of these uh, 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 temples, uh, residence, and uh, you probably can help us to write a letter to the abbot. Tell him we did not have enough food to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a letter, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, but somehow, after a month of uh, you know, better food, uh, then slowly we still having the same kind of uh, treatment uh, in the school. So it was uh, difficult for many young monk, monks because we were growing. I told you that I was about 14 years old. In those uh, ages, you need to eat not just three meals, maybe six meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was not a part of the training. Nowadays, if you go to Taiwan, sometimes I joke with them. I said that today, the food you are eating, if you can share one third of the food with us in those days, I will be very satisfied. <laughs> because it's plenty, it's plenty. Plenty, yes. Uh, thank you for the question, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> the uh, skipping the uh, evening meal, that is part of the monastic rule, isn't it? Yes. When I went to another uh, place, uh, Lianying Temple in a mountain, the abbot uh, of the temple, he was very insist on following a lot of a traditional monastic uh, lifestyle. So even uh, I was young, I had to follow those kind of uh, 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 schedule, and uh, no meal in the, uh, in the evening. And after about a month, he discovered that uh, I was always in hungry, uh, hunger, uh, in, always in? Uh, yeah, uh, always hungry. Then he, uh, he brought me a can of uh, powdered milk. <laughs> Okay, in the evening, maybe you can have some milk, you know, uh, in the room. Uh, he was very kind to me, but somehow a glass of milk still not enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I notice uh, whenever I catch myself being impatient, it's usually because um, there's a certain set of goals, mm -hmm. and I want a certain condition to have taken place. And I'm imagining into the future, I'm, I'm focusing on that moment. And it's almost like my mind thinks if I can just put my attention there hard enough that I'll get there and I won't have to deal with all of these other days in between. But 
I notice whenever I'm doing that, um, it means that I'm not really getting the full experience out of the days that I've been waiting. So it's almost like I'm giving up part of my life because I'm, I'm skipping ahead <laughs> and I'll never get that, those days back. They only happen once. So if my mind isn't there in the present to enjoy what those days are, because I imagine there's this better day that I'm waiting on, uh, I end up losing part of my life. And uh, so when I think about that, um, I try to then turn my attention to the present yes. and see what's around me right now that I can enjoy and then let the future be what it will be when it, when it mm -hmm. comes. Yes. But you still maintain your ultimate goal there. Yeah. Even you focus your mind on the present moment. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for sharing this with us. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yeah. Having kids does require a lot of patience. I admire those parents. Yes, yeah. Endurance. Uh, endu uh, not, not patience, endurance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> According to your definition, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, yes. Uh, who's first here? <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is a good hour, and I know during that hour, I ca you know I can't do anything but just turn off the radio and kind of meditate and focus on driving. Mm -hmm. And that hour is really more um, rewarding mm -hmm. than, <laughs> than the twenty minutes or the ten minutes driving five you know before. So <laughs> yes, yes. So that's uh, and and it's also an hour for me to take get away from my three kids. Mm. <laughs> 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 Wonderful, yes. Jiali, yes. Yeah, I want to echo what you said. Basically, I lose patience because I was not willing to accept things as the way it is. Mm -hmm. So it's the mindset of accepting things mm -hmm. as they are. Mm -hmm. I have a reasonably way of And also to reduce the reaction, increase the reaction time, mm -hmm. don't react. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think uh, also one thing that I found out is that sometimes we lose patience because we don't have the right understanding, as Pastor said. Mm -hmm. uh, last week I had a, an uh, opportunity to go join the youth group at the Buddhist center. So, you know, having three kids myself, actually, we volunteer there. I start to ask myself, do I have the patience to deal with another group of teenagers and what to do with them? And, and then when I join them, uh, you know, I always don't have uh, a lot of patience uh, in terms of I have the compassion to have more teenagers to come and join our Dharma group. But it ne you know, never appears to me year after year is, uh, you know, a, a kind of like four or five people, you know, ten people. And I, you know, I always think in my mind, how do we have more people to come? And then after spending time with them, and I finally have the right understanding why we cannot have teenagers to come. So they share with me that the reason they don't come is that you know, sometimes the, 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 the program is just like a class, and they have enough class. Every day. So they don't know why to come to Okay, now I have the right understanding. And having the right understanding, now we can think about how to make them come, not just in the class format, but you know, make it more interesting to them. And I find out that actually for them, they appreciate coming 
It's only one reason. Because they want to be connected with people, with friends. And, and they don't want to be alone, you know, at home if they have a single child. So I thought that's enlightenment to me that, oh, now I know that, you know, I need to be more patient with them, understand them. What do they really need rather than keep thinking of having them just to come mm-hmm. for a matter of, I want more people to come. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, uh, who's uh, next? Yes. Yeah. So when, uh, when, when you talk about patient, the, the first thing that came to mind is uh, marriage. <laughs> all all of the personal relationship, I think the marriage takes the most patient. And uh, like 50% of the marriage end up in divorce, right? Um, so it's kind of amazing. It's because of the different mindset, because that the, like the, in the, at the ancient time, it's arranged the marriage and, and then everybody stay together, you know, you know at the, to, to, toward the end. Now you have the chance to find the true love <coughs> and you love each other to death. And then when you get married, you couldn't stay each other, right? So it's like, what is the deal? It's the, um, so when I'm thinking about it, I mean, I mean myself, you know, I, I, I'm married to my husband Frank in, for, for like many, more than 40 years, right? The first 35 years. <laughs> for 30, it, it's, and that's how bad it is. It took 35 years to, 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 to change the mindset. Uh-huh. The first 35 years, we fight <laughs> constantly, daily, every day. In and out because the personality, you know, it's just different minds, different temperament, and then it became a habit. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. if he says something, and you feel like he's attacking you, and you fight right back, right? And so of course he's going to fight right back, and so it just, just become a ritual every day. You, you everything that you just keep on fighting for thirty five years, and uh, so there's a lot of hard feeling. You know, like anger and hurt, and 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 all you think about all the possibility. You know, you want to get get out of this relationship. And finally, um, I mean, and I was a Buddhist too. You know, during those times. I I I think I consider myself a very patient person, <laughs> and I'm a very reasonable and a good. good and uh, so but uh, then uh, the, you know like in, in the same Buddhism there's a, a, a Gong An says what is the sum of the one hand <laughs> clapping right one uh-huh. hand clapping oh, okay okay, okay. So mm-hmm. you, get, you mm-hmm. got a sum but you get here mm-hmm. you get more sum right of course I heard that you know <laughs> 20, 30 years already a long time ago but it, it never clicked to me until one day they say okay yeah what is the sound of one hand clicking? You know, nothing, nothing. So, okay. So I said, it's time after 35 years, right? It's time to, and you, you, unless you just part ways, you know, there's no, you have to change something. So I said, okay, from now on, I'm not going to fight. I'm just going to keep silence, right? Yes. So, so, I mean, it takes me, I know it, I have to be the one to do it. Okay, so I said, okay. Next time, when he attack me, that's how I feel. Right? He, when he attack me, I say I'm going to keep silence. And it's not easy. It takes practice because it's like, why? What are you doing? You know, I mean, it's, you know nothing happened. Why are you uh, attack me? Right? You wanted to fight back. So I said, okay. Takes practice, and then I realize every time when I fight back. I lose already. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes to my mind. <coughs> Once I open my mind and fight back, I lose right at this that instance. That's it. I, it's a losing battle. That, that's right, right there. So after a, a practice, uh, you know, quite some times, I, I'm good at just let him say whatever. I, I keep my mouth shut. And then it was amazing the, the reaction because because when he said something and he was expecting, you know, 
Yes, yes. I find that when I find myself in circumstances as that, the difficulty arises when I have an expectation of uh -huh. I'm anticipating that creates the difficulty. And it also takes the joy away from the surprise of a proper finish. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yes, please. <coughs> And so then when I feel like I can't respond promptly, then I feel like people are judging me or I'm not doing a good job. So it's a constant battle all day to keep constantly responding as fast as possible. I mean, I feel like sometimes I could cause a wreck because I hear my phone buzzing in my car and then I'm reaching all in there trying to find it while I'm driving. And that's not healthy. Yes. Yes. Um, any other uh, person? Um, I have. Oh, you still have some. Okay, okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh -huh. And so, <laughs> so that, 
that just like a mirror. That yeah. Like a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it, mm. it, you know, it's, you, you have this present personality is going to help a lot because people around you, they, they're going to feel the happy. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, oh, okay, yeah. Just to add to that, I still remember uh, Daniel shared with us how uh, he was waiting in line for getting a Starbucks coffee uh, <laughs> when, you know, he was impatient. And I think we all have that experience. And today, actually, I grabbed this, what you say. Uh, in, you know, I was trying to get donuts for my daughter before come over. And there's one guy that in front of me, and then he seems like taking some time to figure out what he wants. <coughs> and then suddenly remember, you know, how to be patient yeah. when Daniel's talk. And then I was like looking at him, I was smiling, I was like, wow, he must be getting something really a, a lot for his kids, and, and the kids must enjoy it. So he has all these, you know, donuts, like a dozen of them. So I think being patient is also, you know, really has to come with compassion, just like you said, mm -hmm. right? So when you see it from other people's angle, then you, 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 you kind of totally lose that impatience, right? Then it's like, well, you know, it's his turn. You know, he's going to get something that makes some other people happy. I should be happy for him. So it, in that moment, it doesn't become difficult. You know, if, even if I come running late a little bit, right, you, you need to be always quickly. And, and, and so I, I thought, you know, that that was a really applicable sentence. Okay, yes, yes. Um, <coughs> thank you for all the comments that you have shared with uh, uh, us. And I uh, appreciate because patience is not a theory. Endurance is not theory. Ac actually, it's a, a way of life, a way of a practice. We have to find a way to, you know, uh, to uh, cultivate uh, patience in order to maintain our own happiness in daily life. Um, a while ago, Judy shared uh, her story. And actually, her husband, Frank, uh, is a very nice gentleman. <laughs> And uh, Frank is coming to the temple uh, in the past few years uh, before he didn't come and with, with uh, Judy. But now today, uh, he's uh, serving uh, in the front and uh, try to be part of uh, the volunteer uh, in the temple. So I appreciate, uh, you know, uh, with their uh, uh, dedication uh, in the temple for so many years. It's good to, you know, share our own uh, experiences. Uh, because we learn, you know, uh, 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 by our, our own <coughs> uh, experiences. And also, uh, I think the reason for us to study Buddhism is Buddha actually taught us on certain skills. We can use it right away, can benefit ourselves, also family members, friends around us. Okay? Uh, so today, I appreciate uh, your thoughts. Also, thank you for your attention. Right now it's 11.22 uh, already, so I wanted to let you rest.